In this video, we're going to qualitatively go over the radial velocity method. We're not going to do any math. The radial velocity method is shortened to be the RV method. R for radial, V for velocity. Here we have an animation by Alyssa Overdus. We're looking at a host star, which is the color yellow, and it is orbiting in the sky. In the edge on view, we can see that the host star makes this wobble in the sky. It seems to wobble to the right, wobble to the left, and then back to the right. Because the star is wobbling or orbiting around a common point called the center of mass, we infer another object to be present in the system. We can only see the host star. We cannot see the exoplanet in the orbit. In this case, we have an exoneptunian system that's orbiting around its host star. Both the exoneptunian and the host star are orbiting the common point called the center of mass. In the edge on view, we can see the exoneptunian passing in front and then going behind, passing in front and then going behind. When we have an edge on system like this, we are able to get spectra that show the shift in the wavelength of the observed star. So we're focusing only on the star, we get the observed spectrum. Say we're getting the, uh, the hydrogen Balmer lines and the sodium doublet. And the observed spectrum is in the dark lines that we see. The background spectrum, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, is from the laboratory. And the dashed lines you see is the hydrogen Balmer lines and the sodium doublet as seen in the laboratory, those wavelengths that are seen in the laboratory. What we see from the host star is that the observed spectral line, let's say hydrogen alpha, which I'm pointing to, has this red shift and this blue shift. Notice the line is shifting towards the red side of the spectrum, and then it shifts to the blue side of the spectrum. So the line has a red shift, a blue shift, a red shift, and a blue shift, and it keeps repeating. Because we see these shifting lines around the one line in the laboratory, we know that there must be something tugging on this star to make it make this wobble in the sky. So we infer this exoplanet to be present. We can't image the exoplanet. We can only image the star. So we get the spectra from the star, and we see the spectral line shifting back and forth, which indicates that there is some kind of exoplanet orbiting around the host star. Now, the amount of shift is related to the speed of the star coming towards us or away from us. And we'll take a look at that next. The maximum amount of blue shift or the maximum amount of red shift is related to the speed of the star divided by the speed of light. The exact equation is the amount of shift from maximum red to maximum blue to the one that's in the center. So that delta lambda divided by the wavelength we find in the lab is equal to the speed of the star moving towards or away from us divided by the speed of light. We can take a look at this in terms of the radial velocity or the speed over time. So we're looking at the speed of the star towards or away from us over time. And what we see is this star moving towards us and away from us. Towards us and away from us. Towards us is negative numbers. Away from us goes to positive numbers. Negative numbers mean that the star is coming towards us. We call that a blue shift. And positive numbers means the star is going away from us. We call that a red shift. See, we got red shift, lines go to the red. We got a blue shift, lines go to the blue. We're going to a red shift, lines go to the red. Coming towards us, we got a blue shift. So we're looking at the speed of the star over time and the, comparing it to these shifting wavelengths. Remember I said the amount of shift divided by the center wavelength is equal to the speed of the star divided by the speed of light. And that's what we have here on the left-hand side. So this is how qualitatively we determine the radial velocity method. 
Now, radial velocity means that the star has to be moving towards us and away from us. If we had a situation like we have in the upper left where we're looking face on and only face on, there's no inclination, there's no component of towards or away, we're only looking at the star making circles in the sky, we would get no radial velocity plot at all. We would just get a flat line going at zero because you need some component of the star to move towards you and away from you. Like in this case, the star is moving, going to go away from us and then towards us and then away from us and then towards us. And that's how we get this plot. So if you've got an edge on system, you're able to get the spectra, the change in the wavelength compared to the background wavelength to determine the speed of the star moving towards us or away from us. If you've got a face on system like you have in the upper left, you will get no radial velocity shifts at all. All the dark lines will sit on top of the dashed lines. There'll be no shift and you cannot get the radial velocity plot at all. So the radial velocity method is the speed of the star or the velocity towards us or away from us, hence the word radial, radial velocity method.